can see everybody nodding his head. Don't you see the food is nice? of Abuja Children's Home. We want to say a big thank you from the bottom of our hearts for what we are doing this evening. God will bless and replenish 100 and 100 and 1,000 souls from where you have taken in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you very much. And this is distribution of the already prepared food going around by Adja Nanasarotu and our presidential aspirant or a presidential candidate, sorry, of NCP party in person of When you look at the, the logo of our party and the acronym, the National Conscience Party, as well as our own uh, uh, statement of fact, is that we abolish poverty. So as the saying goes, and probably learning from our leader, Chief Ghani Fawemi, every time you see Ghani, Ghani always celebrates with the less privileged. So I am glad to have learned from that group to celebrate with this particular less privileged, to show love and care to these particular children. It's only by doing so that we can reduce some of the people who involve themselves in social vices. Because when you look at the children, if you let them go the way they are, they have a venom and they have an anger in them that their parents have left them uncared for. So whenever they get into the society, what they become is that they become dangerous elements and tools that can be used for any electoral processes that can make the whole election even more. So when we show them love like this, they believe that yes, Nigerians believe in them. So that when they come out, they become useful products and that we use in the capital development, capital development in the country. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Dr. Yunus Atanko. It's something that we should do. It's something to me is very important because in our country, Nigeria, people like this really need our help. We can't do much, but the little we can, we try to do it. So that is exactly what I'm doing. And Nana Foundation is doing this, uh, the same thing. To help them, if it's school, if it's uh, work, to learn how to do something, working, sewing, or uh, hairdressing, or anything of that sort. What really inspired you, man? Like, what pushed you to want to have a foundation and actually do these things for the next few years? Uh, I have been coming to Nigeria very often. And the way I'm seeing our children hanging around up and down without anything, it touches my heart. I'm a mother, I have two children, I know how it is. So for children like that, it's really something big for me to do that for them. Thank you very much. Tuata, I'm the administrator of the home. So how has it been running this home? Well, I wouldn't say it has been easy, because it hasn't been. But with the kind of support we received this afternoon, the encouragement, you know, 
both moral and financial support, material support that we get from people, the NGOs that come around, they're actually our partners. Because without them, we won't be able to survive here. So their contribution makes a lot, make, I mean, give us a lot of uh, courage to continue with what we are doing. That's looking after the orphans. That's caring for the orphans amongst okay. us. Okay, we know that the FCT provided the whole up with all the support that you say the NGOs are providing. Mm -hmm. What has been the support from the FCT so far regarding maintenance and keep up this uh, facility? The FCT has been very supportive. I must, I must be honest, because as we speak, they pay the salaries of the staff. You know, they give us a subvention, which of course, is not enough. It can be, in fact, doubled before we can meet the required uh, amount that we need to pay the staff. Because they are not all, even on the minim minimum wage. They are only just stipends that they take home. And the work is enormous. But they do it anyway. Because they have the passion to do it. It's about caring for those who are on that privilege that cannot take care of themselves. So they do it willingly, even with the little pay we give them. So FCT, besides donating some of these facilities, like the administrative structure, and most of the hostels were donated by individuals and corporate bodies, like this uh, high-rise, this hostel. Yeah, it was donated by, I said NGOs, a group of people that came together and decided to put up this building for the children. So what basically are the challenges? Sustenance. There are times you, you feel a little bit, uh, I mean, discouraged because the help you are needing is not forthcoming. Like educationally, children are going back to school. I probably have only 50,000 and you need nothing less than 500,000. You look up, you look down, no help. So it becomes a problem. So that's, those are the major challenges and then of course children being sick and then you go to the hospital and you are treated just like any other patient. We expect to get waivers in situations like that, especially when a child requires emergency attention. You are asked maybe money you don't have at that time to go and buy a card, which is over a thousand naira. Probably we didn't have it at that time, but you have to do it anyway to save the child's life.